In the other hadith it says, ثَلَاثٌ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ وَجَدَ بِهِنَّ حَلَاوَةُ الْإِيمَانِ أَنْ يَكُونَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِمَّا سِوَاهُمَا وَيُحِبَّ الْمَرْأَ لَا يُحِبُّهُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ وَأَنْ يَكْرَهَ أَنْ يَعُودَ فِي الْكُفْرِ كَمَا يَكْرَهَ أَنْ يُخْذَفَ فِي النَّارِ وَالْحَدِيثُ مُتَّفَقٌ عَلَيْهِ It's in Bukhari and Muslim. Three qualities, whosoever has them shall taste the sweetness of Iman. Which for many either doesn't exist or has become bitter. Because of our sins. Huh? Because of our sins, we don't taste the sweetness of Iman. We, just, we don't taste anything. If not tasting bitter, bitter taste rather than the sweet. Iman is sweet. Yani sometimes you're just reclining like this and you know that Alhamdulillah you're a Muslim and you're trying your best to be a good Muslim with your shortcomings but you realize why you were created. You believe in Jannah with certainty. You believe in Jahannam with certainty. You believe the angels are writing down. All these things when they come to mind, they give you really a peace of mind. Rather than someone who's lost and confused, they don't know where they're going. You see? This is sweet. That's why, this, you know, the Salaf used to say, if the, if the Umara, if the princes, they knew what we had, they would fight with us with the swords. Trying to take the, the happiness which we enjoy as believers. As believers. Sweetness, it's sweet. But you will, if you have these three qualities, then and only then we will taste the sweetness of Iman. What are they? Number one, that Allah and His Messenger are more beloved to you than everyone else. Is that so? Probably no. Probably no. Because when the command comes, how do, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that, you know, you have a gauge of love and it goes up to full when you say Allah and His Messenger and it's only halfway when it comes to your parents and it's a quarter when it comes to your friends and it's zero when it comes to your boss. Huh? No, no, that's not what it means. There's no gauge for you to be able to measure that kind of love. It's impossible. What it means is obedience. Who do you obey? When your parents tell you to disobey Allah, and you listen to them, and you ignore Allah and His Messenger, you love them more than you love Allah and His Messenger. We fail the test. If your boss tells you that, we fail the test. Anything now which conflicts with the commandments of Allah and His Messenger. Once we favor them, then we have loved them more than Allah and His Messenger. And the same applies for parents with their children. Huh? What the children want. They know it's haram. But yani, he's a child and this and that. Yeah. Meaning you want to make him more happy than what would be make Allah happy. Subhanallah al-Azim. Yani major misconceptions. But they're very common and prevalent. The second quality is that you love a brother and you love him only for the sake of Allah. Which is the point, a shahid. And thirdly, that you hate to go back to the state of disbelief after Allah saved you from it, the same way you hate to be thrown into the fire. Surely, no one likes to be thrown into the fire. And once Allah saves you from deviance to guidance, you're so afraid to go back to the old ways, the same way you're afraid that someone will throw you into the fire. That means you will avoid what will take you there. You're afraid of falling into the old traps. It's a very serious game. 